Thank you. 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 Uh, we will turn the time. First of all, I want to welcome the, the gallery. It's really nice to see all of you here and uh, to be able to get those items of discussion and to have our delegations. Uh, we have to deal with West Area Structure Plan Amendment and with a land use bylaw related to cannabis. And Jeff will give us a preamble. Okay, thank you, Mayor. So this is a public hearing for, we'll start with bylaw 1559, which is a proposed change to the area structure plan. Just for the uh, information of those in attendance who would watch later, an area structure plan is an overlay that guides the development of an area. It's intended to make sure that roadways, utility right-of-ways, and other important things aren't impeded by random development. It lays out the vision of the area of both the residents, the landowners there, and of the council. Changes require a public hearing to allow for residents to express support or criticism of the changes prior to council ruling on the matter. On the wall, and also for council's sake, and I think the delegation all has a little package with the maps as well, um, I'll go, I won't go anywhere, Shem. Okay, good. This is what it currently looks like in the West Area Structure Plan. Now this, this bylaw amendment is to take care of two things, and I need to illustrate one because council hasn't been totally briefed on this. In this corner here, this has, over the last uh, number of years ago, was changed. There was a subdivision change that didn't have a corresponding bylaw change with it. So our intent to, in this bylaw change is to also tidy this up. Some councillors may remember that the town purchased some land in that area for a future stormwater, to, stormwater management pond. And the subdivision didn't play out just like this to accommodate some other development. What it looks like now, I'll go back here, is this. So it was subdivided uh, thusly. Where that number three is is actually subdivided. That's Ken Doig's house. And so the town owns this pay spot here. Um, but the, the bulk of the matter tonight for the public hearing is concerning this area here in the northwest corner. Um, the previous subdivision looked like this. In the West Area Structure Plan, currently it is proposed to cul-de-sacs um, with uh, much smaller lots surrounding those cul-de-sacs. At the request of the landowner in that northwest corner, it is proposed that they are larger lots and that they have two through roads, uh, one being 3rd Avenue continuing all the way through to 12th Street, the other introducing 2nd A Avenue, uh, not as a cul-de-sac, but continuing through to 12th Street as well. Uh, so that is the gist of what's uh, changing in the area structure plan. Um, the bylaw you have in front of you council and in the package for the delegates outlines simply just textually what's changing so it's putting into words what's proposed to change and suggesting what schedules in the structure plan will change so we are not debating the entirety of the structure plan we're simply debating the mapping and the layout of this area of the structure plan which is the topic tonight um, that's everything uh, administratively that I have prior to any delegations uh, before I sit down, is there any questions of administration from council before you hear your delegations? Okay, thank you. All right. So, thank you, Jeff. We will now ask uh, Mr. Ryan Dick to come to the podium and to help us understand what the post perspective is regarding this, those changes. Okay, thank you. Um, and everyone's received my memo from the other day? Okay, great. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Give me something. No. Ah, so, so in response to the applicant's uh, application to amend the ASP, uh, I had a couple suggestions. And there was some discussion uh, respecting this matter uh, with staff and myself um, and involving the developer prior to the application or, or the, the early stages of the application. And we, we looked at a few different options conceptually. 
uh, that, that could be a little different than this. If you want to end this, you got a laser on there. Oh, if you want to reference the uh, reference that map. So my concern with with allowing both. Thing. Yeah, it should be. I was just using it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> With allowing both these roads to go through um, as the, the potential to sort of change the function of, of 12th Street West, which, which now, in, in, in my understanding, my view sort of functions as a collector type roadway. Uh, so allowing these two access points, unsignalized access points, um, will sort of change, has the potential to change uh, the roadway. So my submission to council is that I could see one access point being acceptable, but two access points, third and two A, I think especially <coughs> since the spacing distance is not very much here. <clears throat> if this road is truly to be a collector type road, a general sort of principle in, in transportation planning is you want to limit you know, the, the number of unabated access points and try and manage the, the intersection spacing. So, so my view is that you should consider only allowing a single access point. And, and I, uh, I think you have this, but this is the last page from the memo. Um, gives you an idea as to how this could look. It would require a different design, of course. A cul-de-sac, for instance. What I'm also suggesting is, is sort of a compromise with respect to density. Um, in the existing plan, are we able to go to the existing Just plan? Just use your upper down arrow. Oh, okay. You should get there. Uh, go oh, point in here. Oh, okay. there you go. In the current plan, so that's that's 24 lots, and uh, the acreages are. I think we're in about the quarter quarter acre kind of lot size range. So, we're, so the proposal is to half the number of lots, so 24 down to 12. What I'm suggesting is that we consider adding an, an additional four lots as a sort of a compromise with respect to the, the net decrease in lots. I understand the developer's aspirations for larger lots and I completely get that. <clears throat> but I think, um, especially in the context of our municipal development plan, the South Saskatchewan regional plan, these documents that call for uh, balanced increases in densities, uh, that we consider sort of a middle ground uh, respecting the number of lots and the density. Uh, now, what this would do is provide some of these more half-acre, larger size lots, but then also uh, provide a number of the smaller size lots in the quarter-acre to 0.3-acre lot size range. So those are the two matters that I've suggested uh, in the memo here and just outlined for you. I think that's really all there is to my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council. Do you have questions uh, for Ryan? Ryan, with the uh, access off the 12th, do we exit on to 3rd Avenue? Are we joined to 3rd Avenue? Currently? Yes. Well, in this, in this plan, are we going to be joined on to 3rd Avenue? Eventually. Yep. Then, then we're going to set up a, a road race? <laughs> well, 3rd Avenue would be, yeah, that, that was uh, yeah, one of my colleagues who, yeah. who originally um, did the plan back in 2007 did mention that that at that time when she was doing this 10 years ago that was a concern of landowners that if third Ave was to go through it becomes a long sort of you know potential high speed sort of strip we know that yeah i, I know we uh, discussed it as previous council mm -hmm. of that connection and the safety involved in the residential area and, and I think traffic control can, can probably mitigate that. Um, but yeah, that, that was a concern and probably remains a concern. Oh, sir. Uh, a couple of things. In, in something like this, um, uh, has there ever been any consideration to low level speed bumps? Like you're going into areas in the, in the cities, you're getting speed bumps of, yeah. which help to control the traffic in there, which allows for more of this type of thing. The other thing, um, with 12th, 12th uh, Street there, if it's going to become a collector street. The road base is going to have to be changed on that road because it's not going to be to proper codes. Everything is going to have to be upgraded on at least partway down that to, to take in this, uh, this subdivision 
which is not a bad thing, but it, there is a cost involved into upgrading that road base to, to be able to allow for this type of collection. And I guess the third thing is, it's close to the highway. The Department of Highways also has their, the, tra or the Transportation Department has their regulations as opposed to exits onto Main Road, <coughs> because that kind of connects the provincial highway, doesn't it? That becomes part of that 501 highway. And I know it's well, not, it's well, not easy <coughs> to, it's not easy to uh, get permission to have accesses too close <coughs> together on that. So those are the kind of concerns that I, that I see here. Uh, I think with respect to those first two matters, if I may, they're, they're both, um, those are good points, but they're more operational matters. Okay. For example, the speed bumps, the, the speed, those are things that, that, um, that, that you could do in response to the land use decision that you make. Uh, but we wouldn't typically get into that detail in area structure plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just two things. The Pulse Street is not a provincial highway. We tried to give it to them. They wouldn't take it. So, okay. So it's a town road. Uh, also, Third Avenue is not there between 10th, between 9th Street and 10th Street. Is that town property or is that owned by citizens along in that area? Dwight Clark's, for example. No. I think that's Third on Street, Mike's land. Lloyd Clark's land. Lloyd Clark's land is Lloyd Clark's land. Is Lloyd Clark's land. There is an easement there for access and for utilities, but he owns the land as of right now. So we'd have to deal with him if we wanted to move it up if there. If we wanted to do we we'd have to negotiate and buy it or do something with it. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, any other questions? No one, do you want um, to add I, something? I did send this application to Alberta Transportation and they said since 12th Street is an in-town street, it's up to the town to determine how many accesses they have and they have no, nothing against us allowing more accesses on 12th Street. All right, thank, thank you so much for that update. Thank you. Now we will ask uh, Dr. Glenn Jones to come and to present to council. Well, I think this is an honor to be able to speak to this uh, esteemed group. Uh, some of you I've sat across the table from in, in, in times past and enjoyed it very much. And first of all, I'd like to uh, say that all of you people are my friends and I uh, enjoy working with you. Uh, because of, I, I disagree with you, it doesn't mean I'm not your friend. Uh, but I, you know, sometimes you disagree be quite sharp, and if you can't have a disagreement and still be friends, then I suppose you weren't friends to start with. So with that in mind, this is, this is how I am approaching all this. And uh, in my little dissertations, forgive my uh, typographical errors and uh, a little bit of organization, but historically, what we have been calling the West Bypass for a long time, uh, it appeared on the scene in the mid to late 70s, along with the East Bypass. And uh, uh, the West Bypass uh, was built, to, some of the property had to be expropriated to, to get it. It was very difficult to obtain, and, uh, but eventually we got it, we got the money, and the 9th Avenue appeared, the bridge there, that's all part of it. Same with the 1st Avenue Bridge and the East Bypass. Uh, in uh, what, what, well, uh, when Fred Spatton was our mayor, uh, we were approached by the county for support to form the Beezer Road into uh, a provincial highway, uh, Highway 501 West, it became. And originally, when that for the, the county made the application, 12th Street was part of of that application. The town reviewed it and said, well, 9th Avenue is a lot more expensive to maintain, probably you take that. We'd like you to take both, but at that, that, that time, and we weren't smart enough to push it at the time, but they uh, accepted 9th Avenue with the bridge and everything else, and they keep wanting to give it back, but uh, don't ever let them. You don't have to. Uh, so, 12th Street was really never part of 501. It was part of the original application, but it never became part of 501. Uh, and uh, uh, it was with provincial grants that these two roads were built. 
and then the province took over the East Bypass, which was a good deal for the town. Uh, a few years ago, and I kind of uh, noted this in my little paper, is that uh, uh, we approached the, the, uh, the province, the premier, our MLA, our minister of highways, they had them right here. And they went up and looked at, you know, would you take that as part of Highway 501 so you can maintain it and maintain it as a, uh, a through street. And the, the premier, the minister of highways, or MLA, and the, another individual was there at that moment, they thought that was a pretty good idea. But the, uh, the bureaucrats of the time were very much, to, they, they wanted to give the whole thing back to the county. And so they, they dragged their feet and the whole thing died on the order paper. Uh, I would really hate to see us go back to the way things that were <coughs> to go to go on 12th Street to what 7th Street is now. Originally 7th Street was the only way other than Main Street of getting from north to south and south to north in our town. And there was limited access and it, it worked well except there was no 9th Avenue, it just went off the Beezer Road, you have to, had to come up uh, uh, 3rd Avenue to get access to it. But all this was some councils that had foresight and the opportunity and, and determination to make our community look like it would, what it should be. Now, I have respect for delegated de developers. Mike, I think what you're doing, you're trying to do is great. But preserve the, that, that road as a road and a way to get through our town. It lines up with Highway 501. You say, well, when we that gets all, becomes like a 7th Street, we'll simply go further west. Well, further west is a cemetery road. Come on, people, look at the terrain. Look at the, look, look at the, problem, the problems of getting access and an ownership of that property. I've talked to uh, a number of people around town, only one of them showed up tonight, and I thank you for coming. He uh, owns a business up close to that West Bypass. And uh, I got two responses, and uh, they are, they, we always talk, so that each one of them said, well, what are they doing having that at 50 kilometers an hour? That's silly. That shouldn't be 50 kilometers an hour. There's, this, this connects with Highway 501. It's the only one that does. And the, the, the responses I got when they said that we were going to make that into simply a collector road and this sort of thing, number was, what are they thinking about? The other one which isn't so polite is, I think that's stupid. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm say, simply saying, Council, here's your opportunity to maintain some foresight. Are you going to determine what our town looks like 10, 20, 30 years from now, or are you going to leave it up to the developers, which are good people, well intentioned, but they've got to make a dollar on what they're doing, and I don't want them to do that. That's, that's the name of the game. But please preserve this road. Now, the whole thing won't end tonight, regardless of, of what your decision is tonight, because if you uh, try, if you, if you go ahead and and say, make this, try to make this into a collector road, instead of keeping it as a, as a through road, then I'll go to work. I've talked a lot to uh, quite a few people already, and I'll talk to some more. So please listen to what I'm saying, and listen to what the people in our community really think about our community. And try and keep this as it should be. Thank you very much, Council. Do your best to do what's right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John, for that passionate speech. We will now ask uh, Mr. Mike Schaefer to come and do his presentation. Thank you, Mike, for coming. Um, thanks for letting me come and talk about what I want to do. Uh, I purchased this property it's been about a year now, with the intention of having an acreage for myself and my family and having an area where there, we can have large lots for people that want them. Now, I don't know which button I push here. Uh, 
Hashem, can you give us a little bit of help with the... This one right here? Right there? Those five lots, as you probably know, were developed a few years ago as large lot residential lots. They were developed by my dad and my uncle, and every one of them has sold. Now there's one house on it right now with another one has a development permit out, getting ready to build it. Now, there aren't a lot of areas in town that we can do large lot residential homes. And I have talked with quite a few people around town, and I probably lost the sale of my house, which is listed right now, to one of these people because they asked what I was doing, and I told them, and they wanted a bigger, a big lot. They came from a big lot, they want a big lot, and they bought a cheaper house that they think that they can sell quicker in the future. Um, in saying that, uh, Mr. Uh, Nolan Card and I went over the proposal from the Old Man uh, Regional Planning Commission, and their lots that had the cul-de-sacs on it did not meet the size requirements for large lot residential. They were a little bit too small, and the only way I could get it to where I had the half acre lots was to have a through street of 2nd A Avenue without having a turnaround. That being said, we came up, we had a different, or I had a different drawing that 2nd A Avenue was too close to 2nd Ave. So we, I came up with this, which works out very nice for the lots. All of the lots are almost the same size, about half an acre. The ones on the south side, which is uh, right there, are a little bit smaller. But I have quite a bit of interest in them. And I know there's not a lot of development going on in Karsten right now. And I'd like to change that. And I'm trying to come up with certain ways to do that. And this is one of them because as a builder, I get a lot of feedback from people who want bigger lots. I mean, we, look at, we can look at the lots from at the <coughs> golf course that were developed however many years ago. Um, I had talked with Sherwood Developments about it, and every one of those lots that are there now had a deposit on them at the time. Every one of them had a $5,000 deposit on the time. And when they came back out with the size of the lots, people didn't want that size. Now, I know that there is a, a market for smaller lots for people who do not want yards. But there is a market for people who look for bigger lots in town. Um, now, in talking about this 12th Street, it's been, I'm one of those that when it got changed to 50 kilometers an hour, was annoyed. My shop, I don't know if you don't know where my shop is, but I live down closer to the golf course in my shop. I go up 12th Street turn left on 2nd Avenue, and you know, so I'm driving 12th Street every day. And when it changed to 50 kilometers an hour, I didn't have, you know, I wasn't happy about it. But I thought it was a bypass at the time, and I thought a bypass shouldn't be 50 kilometers an hour. But the bypass to 501 is at the golf course road. From the top of the hill going down is the bypass to 501, not 12th Street. Cartston is doesn't seem like it so much, but we are expanding. I mean, we have some industry that's moving west of 12th Street. And because of that, 12th Street, I believe, should be considered a street and should be able to have extra approaches to it. Uh, sorry, my phone keeps shutting off. Um, everything about it, I know that there were some issues and you probably are aware of it with the third avenue that got put in just down the street from where I wanted to help. Everything about this one will be engineered, will be designed to meet all the requirements and built the roads, the services, everything to, you know, to the point where the town, when the town takes it over, they won't have anything else to do other than maintain a road. So I would encourage you to look closely at it. I do have a, a lot of interest in it. I would like to pr proceed with this proposal. I think it would be well received with residents in town. Um, and 
that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just would like to know from my own perspective, would, be, would you be even willing to consider maybe some tweaking on that plan? I've looked at it in quite a few different ways, and I've sat down with Mr. Nolan Carter. I'm not saying he, he didn't give me this. This is what I gave him, but I've told him he's given me some ideas and things. I don't want a cul-de-sac. I'm not a fan of cul-de-sacs. I look around at cul-de-sacs right now with the families that we have here and the number of kids that drive vehicles now, and they're jam-packed with vehicles. There's, they don't have a lot of frontage on the lots. Yeah, they're pie-shaped and they can be bigger, but I'm not a fan of cul-de-sacs, and I'll do everything I can to not put a cul-de-sac in. Okay, so here's another question. Your two-way street, have you ever thought maybe to, so you don't want to call the side because you don't want to call. But have you thought that it could be a dead end? I talked to uh, my engineer who's looking at the roads and the services and he said you would not have to be able to have a dead end without a turnaround for emergency vehicles. Wow. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so like 2A Avenue will continue on 11th Street, because 11th Street, well, er, eventually, I know that's a sore subject around town, but I'm not one that's just going to, you know, that's the type of person who, you know, throw in the towel, you guys want it, you guys do it, hey? I want to I wanted develop it and develop it properly, so we will have to have part of 11th Street also developed there. Thank you, Mike. So, are there questions for Mike? I appreciate the fact that you're trying to bring economic growth to Karsten. Wow, there's a the thought, hey? So I appreciate your insight and that you're excited to bring money to Karsten, people to Karsten. Those are all good things. Um, I did wonder about um, the straight through. Do you not feel that the that the direct road isn't going to conflict in any way with the speed and people going through there and kids and so you're talking about Third Avenue right I am. now? I'm not. You look around Second Avenue goes all the way through. Right. You know, right. avenues are made to go all the way through. They're not made to come to a stop and go around right. and, and right. continue on. So I'm not concerned about it. It's, it's no different than going from Main Street all the way up 3rd Avenue until right. you hit uh, Lloyd Clark's property, hey? Because right. you're not going to gain speed from no. from uh, 9th, or 7th, 9th Street to 12th Street. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mike, I understand your concern about dead ending on 7 a.m. Um, what if you had it a dead end, but whatever emergency services needed to, they could go through if they had the, you know. I don't know how you would uh, enforce that. If there, well, was, if, there, if there was a road that went through there you know, for the emergency vehicles. Two big pillars that only emergency services have access to move them, mm -hmm. they need to get through. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's something that can be looked at. I don't know if they I would. Probably kind of like what's by your house. Pardon me? It's kind of like what's by your house right now. Right. I don't know if they would like that just because of the time it would take, I guess, if there's an emergency to get out and move something. I don't know. That would be something we would have to ask them. I know I was going to suggest on 43rd Avenue in Lethbridge, they've got the, a large mobile home park there. And they have that exact thing, but the emergency people have keys to the lock. And so they'd be well aware of the situation and they would be well aware to get in and out of there as quick as they need to. I mean, that's a great idea. I, I think that that would probably solve some of that problem there and still get what you want. Mm -hmm. And I think when the mayor says we're willing to tweak, I think that's a good tweak. Because you know, they have a gate there and, and people don't just go through, right? And it works really good over in Lethbridge. Well, I, I don't see a problem with it. There's other A avenues in town that go on to 
streets. It's no different than what I'm proposing. I think the only problem that, that we see here is 12th Street right now is used as a bypass, which it's not a bypass. And so because it's 12th Street, the <coughs> speed limit's been dropped to 50 kilometers an hour as a town street. It's no different than other places in town that have a uh, second A, third A, fourth A, whatever. Mike, we still hold out faint hope that the province is going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> very faint. Very well, I, I, I just, it seems like the west end of town is an area that like people like to develop. It seems to develop more than the east end of town. And we're at 12th Street. Where do we go from there? Do we stop now? You know, it's like because it's a bypass, do we stop and just let some industrial and hope the industrial comes on the west side of it and keep it as a, as a highway? You know, to me, Kirkston's growing. It's no different than every other street in town that happened when, when it grows. So. Councilman Bangor, you wanted to add something? Mike, now correct me. We started out originally with 24 lots, right? Yeah. Now we're down to 16? 12. 12. Or 12? Or yeah. Oh, she's suggesting, suggesting 16. four more. Or putting yes. four well, in. Well, their four proposal had 24. I don't know about the new one. I it was splitting the middle block. It was splitting. Yeah. Which, yeah. Was, so was, so you, which would give us 16. Then. Yeah. You, yeah you would keep the top, the, the bottom, but you would. Split but they weren't. The they didn't meet the large lot residential size, though. Yeah. That's some of that. that was I need to clarify some stuff no on the bylaw. Like the West Area Structure Bylaw was amended once prior by a prior council, but not properly. So this area up on that end was, sub was subdivided yeah, that way, it was fixed. approved by council. This area, 3rd Street going all the way through, was approved by council. Right. The jogs in 11th Street to the west were all approved by the former councils, but they weren't properly done to amend the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are looking at the map and you're saying, oh, 3rd, he's proposing 3rd to go through, well that's already been done by council, a previous council at one time said third could go all the way through. That was uh, when Mayor Bagazi was on council. That was a long time ago. So it was a while ago. So I, I do have a map drawn over top of it all showing third there, showing all the jogs on 11th Street, showing the changes to um, Jensen's properties, but not done properly. Now, Mike, you, you're in favor of large residential lots. So what, how many large residential lots are you putting into this plan? Twelve. Twelve? Twelve? And they, they meet the large lot? Yeah. What they don't meet is a mixed That's right. and a higher density. That's what they don't meet according to the um, Ullman River and the Saskatchewan. Another thing with the bylaw was the original plan, this area was zoned large lot residential, but the original plan, none of those lots in that area were big enough to fit or be classified as a large lot. So the original plan had some problems too. And at the time, Diane always said, any of the lots that are dotted, the lines that are dotted, are not really set in stone, they're more to be moved around and manipulated by the owners to fit what the plans are supposed to be. So a large lot would say that those lots, as they were all cul-de-sacs, would have never fitted. They would have had to be made larger to fit the actual large <coughs> size. Mike, I want to ask you uh, another question. If we keep the drawing the way you have it, the house is on a top part and on a bottom part are facing a road, mm -hmm. but the middle group is facing a road, but the one on the top are facing the back of the house. It would, well, it would actually be uh, opposite that. Okay, so I, I would have the, because of the because of the lay of the land, they would it would be like a architectural control type thing. Those houses would face to the north. Okay. Because the lay of the, the slope of the land slopes off to the back, 
And that's, okay. that's the best way to have a property slope for a home, is higher at the front, lower at the back. So those ones, would, they would all face the same um, way. You wouldn't have one that faces one, one that faces opposite. They would all be the same. That would be stipulated in architectural controls. Makes sense. So, I, I do also want to point out, like, as a developer, you know, like uh, Mr. Jones had said, you know, everybody's there to make money. You know, if I, I'm, yeah, I can make some money on it. I'm not going to lie. That's not my number one goal. My number one goal right now for me is to have an acreage for me and my family. And I can't proceed with that till we come to some kind of agreement here. But I could take um, the other drawing and put in 24 or even the 16 lots and make more money. Mm -hmm. That's not where the market is that I'm trying to hit. And I don't, if, as soon as I do that, I have a feeling people are gonna look elsewhere because they want the bigger lots. Okay. Thank you, Mike, for this presentation. We uh, will have to discuss yep. this, and uh, we will okay. then give you a decision. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We will uh, carry on with. Uh, Nine D. Mayor, you still have fifteen or sixteen forty seven C in this public hearing. Mm. Oh yes, that's right. Correct. Okay. So Jeff, if you don't mind giving us an update on the land use bylaw cannabis. It looks from our delegation that uh, there's not as much interest in this one. So Which is rather remarkable. Yeah, which is interesting. However, this is now the public hearing for bylaw 1647C. This bylaw requires changes to upcoming uh, changes to our land use bylaw in response to upcoming changes in both federal and provincial legislation involving the legalization of recreational cannabis and the allowance of cannabis retail businesses. Uh, one thing I just wanted to read: the public may ask, why not simply prohibit all uses in the community? Why not simply prohibit cultivation and retail sale of cannabis altogether? Why accommodate it within your land use bylaw? I've already been asked that question. So what I wanted to, for the purpose of the public meeting, was to just quote a paragraph from Reynolds, Murth, Richardson, Farmer law firm on the matter. They say, in Alberta, municipalities cannot prohibit or opt out of cannabis retail within their boundaries without risking a challenge. Municipalities can regulate the location and the standards for retail cannabis use for proper planning reasons and can further regula regulate retail cannabis operations through business licensing bylaws and cannabis use through nuisance bylaws. But municipalities cannot outright prohibit cannabis retail in their land use bylaw or prohibit cannabis use in their municipalities. An absolute prohibition would likely be met with a successful court challenge based on the argument there is no evidence to support the view the cannabis retail will have such a deterioring, de they call it a deleterious impact on the use and enjoyment of neighboring properties to warrant total prohibition no matter where located. An outright ban would likely lead a court to conclude the municipality is seeking to prohibit the activity because of the moral undertones and not because of legitimate land use considerations. So the answer to the question is, why don't you simply prohibit it? It's because it will simply open up for us more headache than we will currently have, if we have any at all. So that's the, the legal piece. Um, I do want to point out, and, and Mr. Ryan Dick will talk about this too, there were some small amendments since you did first reading. The most significant of which is, you'll recall in the previous map, the hospital had a 100 meter buffer zone, and everything else at 300. At the recommendation of Old Man River, everything is at 300, simply for simplicity in applying the bylaw. Um, and so that's been changed. Uh, and um, I think there was a couple of textual changes in the schedule. There was a couple of small grammatical changes that we just fixed as we got going through it of no consequence to the bylaw. Um, and a definition, or in the general, there was a definition that was, that was changed. So we did make a few changes since first reading. Those are outlined in the package you have. They're all in red. 
Prior to having any delegations, are there any questions of the administration on the matter? Okay, thank you. No. Thank you. But I can tell you the media are rather interested in what is happening here. Brian, thank you. Yeah, I don't don't have too much to add here. I guess uh, if I can um, I can certainly give some uh, some context as to what other communities in the region are doing. And as you maybe know, as I've, as I've mentioned before, the approach you're taking with direct control is, is more on the restrictive end, which is fine. Uh, a place like, for example, Picture Butte is doing the same thing. I was in Nobleford on Monday night, and unlike here, they had about 75 people there. <clears throat> Quite concerned about the thing. Yeah. And, but they're using a different approach, not direct control. They're listing the use in the district, the cannabis retail sales. So there's there's a there's a spectrum of different approaches. And maybe you've even heard the town of Coldale is pursuing um, exactly what Jeff described, that a community shouldn't do uh, being sort of an outright prohibition. So they passed first reading on that just last week as well. So really, until, until the, this matter gets in the courts and we get some... We get some uh, decisions on the thing we're not going to really know where we stand what's reasonable what's unreasonable for say setback separation distances like we have here so we're a little blind at this time but as you know we can reopen this matter at any time and amend the land use by law should there be a precedent setting court case or something like that so Jeff mentioned a few of the of the suggested changes um, and I think those are all in the memo Another of, of which being to set an enactment date for the bylaw uh, to October 17th, which corresponds with the federal date of uh, planned legalization. The one other thing that I picked up on that I did not, that I missed originally was to, what we have right now is uh, hours of operation for a retail store from nine till nine. What it actually says in the, the order and council regulation is that the, the opening time will be 10 a.m. Same as liquor stores. So what I'm suggesting council do is just change that 9 a.m. till to 10 a.m. so to uh, align with the, the provincial standard because they, they won't be able to open at 9 a.m. anyway. So if we have it at 9 a.m., we'll just look silly. That was my my sort of original mistake there. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't think I have anything else to mention. Thank you. All right, council. Uh, council, do you have question for? Ryan. Well, Ryan, I think we have tried our best to put a legislation that is covering our needs, and then we shall see what the future brings, as we all blind to that. Thank you so much. Councillors, <coughs> we have our next delegation that will come at uh, 7. So we are going to try to complete item nine. We were. Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, you require a motion to yeah. uh, return oh, to right. the regular meeting. Uh, absolutely Council. right. I forgot about that motion. one. Councillor Cole. I'll make a motion to return to regular council business and um, move out of the public hearing area. Thank you so much. All in favor? Thank you. Sometimes I do need a reminder. <laughs> All right, so let's go back where we stop. We uh, did 9A, we uh, do not have 9B. And 9C is for your information. 9D, is there anything that you want to uh, talk about prior to our AUMA planning session? No? Well, that's good. If you don't have any question there. Just one question. Go ahead. Has there been any other attempts in the last several years to, ex to extend 11th Street? Where it, I know we ran into some property issues at, when I was on council four. Has there been any, any desire, oh, any, any oh, oh, efforts to try and move from 2nd Avenue to build 11th Street? Tied in from 2nd. Yeah. Huh? We, we tried to plan. Yes. Weston has owned it, but, and we, but we haven't tried since. Don Weston's son purchased it from the company. There is a for sale sign sitting on it right now. There is a for sale sign, and he, I, I did talk to him. He doesn't want to give it up. He would want the value of a lot 
support is kind of what he said. But we haven't ever gone and officially negotiated yeah. or negotiated or anything to say he's going to do it. I've heard um, rumors that it's going to be sold to somebody else who might put 11th Street through. Okay. But that's just rumors so far. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you have some correspondence. There that Alberta Recreation Park Association is an invite. Jeff, do we normally send any one of staff to that uh, seminar? I know uh, that we, we send our staff to one of them, but I don't know if that. They is go to one. the rec <coughs> uh, no, our, anyway, recreation facility personnel conference. They haven't gone to Alberta Recreational Parks. No. All right, so there is no special uh, requirement for us to send anyone there. No. Thank you. So what I need to know of council is do you need to have a quick break before we have our next? I, I, before we move on, I, I'd like to ask a question about this recreation. Thing. Okay, please go okay. ahead. Why, why is it that we don't have an appetite to send a counselor to this meeting? Um, I'd like to see a little more reporting going on in the recreation field. I, I, we have this comes up every year, year after year after year, and, 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 and I, I understand our recreation director goes occasionally, but I just, I've never seen a lot of what's going on. I, I think it's important the money the kind of money that we spend every year on recreation I think it behooves us to send at least our recreation counselor there to to you know to look into it and because there's new ideas coming forward all the time and and I'd like to know what they are that's well, my feeling I, I I don't know how do you feel about that council Brown I mean you're the recreation person um, so, I read up on this conference and I didn't feel it was worth my time going. Okay. There's another one that's coming up that I felt maybe down the road, but uh -huh. it wasn't this one. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so, well, there you go. As Councilor Barnes and I have discussed, whenever we send somebody to these meetings and whatever they are, we need as a, as a council to receive a report. And it seems like when our administration and administration staff goes to something like this, such as our recreation department, we never receive a report of the things that are changing or what he found interesting or what he could use in our community. Okay. So, so we need to have reports. All right. So here's an interesting point you're bringing up. Um, Jeff, is there a place for staff who is as assigned to a committee? To do a report to the committee if they go to a seminar. I think that is as, as simple as that. It should be the committee that receives that uh, report. Right. Well, what I can tell you is on Parks and Rec or on FCSS, one of the boards that I sit on, when we go to a conference or whatever, we do return a report to, right, to the that, and then it's in our minutes, which is then right. sent to council. Okay. So, which is the way essentially, the, right? So yeah. you are finding out about what happened. I don't know as yeah. far as employees go. That that's different. That is normally the proper way it's done. All right. So, do you need a five minute a five minute recess? Okay. So, I need a motion for a recess. Okay. Okay. All right. So, you have five minutes. Go for it, Council. All in favor? That five minutes, and we will entertain our next delegation. Okay.